Arguments which explain the sixth mass extinction as a product of human population growth and the development of technology. Treat the megafaunal extinctions between 45,000 to 25,000 years ago as the result of simple human expansion. As we discussed in our recent feature film, Foreland Part 1, those who adopt this perspective rely on the overkill thesis. That humans hunted giant sloths, woolly mammoths, and other such megafauna to extinction as we spread across the globe. In the film, we accepted this argument for the sake of time, instead arguing that the process cannot form part of the sixth mass extinction due to the limits of its impact. The reality is that the causes and environmental impact of the megafaunal extinctions are rather more contested than the view given in an uncomplicated overkill thesis. Explanations for the megafaunal extinctions fall into three categories. Overkill, climactic change, or some combination of these two. The contest between these positions is already around 200 years old, though it has sharpened since the publication of Paul Martin's paper Prehistoric Overkill in 1967. This initial paper postulates that human hunting of megafauna was impactful as it preyed upon weaknesses in animal populations. A 2017 paper provides an example of what this means, arguing that even the killing of one juvenile per person per decade could have caused a megafaunal collapse. However, Martin's later Blitzkrieg model is more common in popular literature. This envisions humans extinguishing megafauna so rapidly that few or no kill sites are left behind, a convenient way of avoiding any burden of proof. Whilst this distinction is important, those who adhere to a climate model of megafaunal extinction argue that both overkill models are inaccurate, with arguments frequently highlighting that megafaunal extinctions seem to have begun before human arrival in many cases. Much of the scientific debate, therefore, remains rooted in complex problems of radiocarbon dating and the small scale of fossil records for this period. For example, a March 2024 paper found no evidence for a climactic impact on megafauna, while a November 2024 paper found no evidence for a human impact outside of islands. Whilst these debates are unlikely to find any swift or definite resolution, they can still illuminate some elements of early human development. For example, a common riposte to climactic theories of megafaunal extinction is that megafauna had survived previous environmental shifts. In response, Mauricio E. Greipel et al. illustrate that intense seasonality and desertification were more pronounced in the period than before. This not only provides a potential explanation for megafaunal extinction, but also a causal explanation for the onset of human migration across the Earth. The impact that megafauna had on broader ecosystems provides perhaps even more insight. As a 2015 study by Elizabeth S. Bakker et al. and a 2016 study by Edvinda Mali et al. highlight. Megafauna suppressed woody vegetation, potentially reducing woody species cover by up to 95% in some regions. It is not hard to see why sedentary human populations did not emerge in this context, the scale of trampling making settlements difficult to maintain. If we assume megafaunal herd migrations, this could also provide an explanation for the small number of mass grave kill sites we have uncovered, humans corralling megafauna away from vital woodland and off cliffs. Finally, the megafaunal extinctions saw a large increase in dense forests, 
Whilst it would be straightforwardly incorrect to consider these ecosystems healthier, this does complicate the point of those who tie this period to the sixth mass extinction. Simply, if we accept a human hand in megafaunal extinction, then we must also accept a human hand in the formation of the ecosystems which formed the origins of the Holocene. This complexity shows the real importance of rejecting narratives which treat the megafaunal extinction as part of the sixth mass extinction. Whilst overkill and population growth provide a simple and easy explanation, they do so by reducing human history to a linear process of destruction, obscuring the complexity of our species and ecosystems throughout history.